Ready to jailbreak your Nintendo 3DS or 2DS handheld system? I've got an updated guide that will help you get through the process faster and easier than ever. In this video, you'll get all the steps you need to jailbreak your 2DS or 3DS handheld game system, and it all starts right now. Hello there, if it's your first time here, my name is Blaine, and my channel's all about helping you get the most out of your video game experiences. If you like original content about restorations, repairs, mods, product reviews, and other great video game content, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out. Here we go. Some important notes as we get started. You must have the latest software update installed on your 2DS or 3DS. At the time of this recording, it's version 11.13. I recommend that you fully charge your 2DS or 3DS system and keep it plugged into wall power during this entire process. All of the links that you're going to see featured in the video are listed in the video description below. This guide follows the fantastic instructions over at 3ds.hacks.guide. I'd recommend that you open the guide as you go through this video tutorial to get the latest updates on the process. And finally, attempting to jailbreak a console does come with risk. I will do what I can to help you in the comments, and there are some great YouTubers here that can be of some help. And 3ds.hacks.guy has an incredible Discord. But if you brick your console through this process, well, what this says. The first thing to do is to verify that you are, in fact, on version 11.13, and you need to verify that you're on browser version 45. Go to System Settings on your 2DS or 3DS. In the top screen, you'll need to look for this information. This new Nintendo 3DS XL system that I'm using here is on version 11.13, which is the most recent, has browser version 45, and is on region code U for USA. You'll need to have region code U for USA, E for Europe, or J for Japan for this guide to work. If you don't, stop now and don't proceed forward. Very important. Assuming you have the proper firmware version in place in the right region, go ahead and power off your 2DS or 3DS, remove the micro SD card, and put it into your computer. There's some files you'll need to download to get started. The first of them is the Homebrew menu or the Homebrew launcher application. This makes it possible to take advantage of an exploit on your 2DS or 3DS system to start launching the Homebrew software necessary to get the complete custom firmware. In the description below, follow the link to the GitHub for this product, and then download boot.3dsx to your computer. You also need to download browser hacks for this section of the exploit. Yeah, I know it looks like Bowser hacks, but it's actually browser hacks because it takes advantage of a vulnerability in the 3DS and 2DS browser to install an exploit. Scroll down until you get to the browser hacks zip file and download the zip file to your computer. I also want to note here there are two separate sections for whether you have the old or the new Nintendo 2DS or 3DS. Both are marked carefully in the description below to make sure to eliminate confusion. If you have the original you need to get the old and if you have new you need to get the new. Go to the download section on your computer. You'll need to uncompress the browser hacks folder that you just downloaded. Extract it to its own folder inside the download section. And once you're done, I always recommend deleting zip files in order to eliminate confusion when it comes to entering folders and transferring files around. Move the boot.3dsx file over to your SD card. Copy it from your downloads folder and then go to your SD card, in this case I've conveniently named subscribe. Yeah, I know one of my friends used to say, it ain't easy being cheesy. You should see a Nintendo 3DS folder on your card already. Go ahead and just paste this file right to the root of the SD card. Go back to your downloads folder, and then go into the browser hacks folder that you uncompressed. You're going to see different folders based on which region that you need. In this case, I'm in USA, so I've entered USA. Grab everything that you see inside your region's folder and copy it. Then go back to your micro SD card and paste everything that you copied right on the root of the SD card. Now you can safely eject the SD card, put it back in your device, and power it on. With your device powered back on, 
press the left shoulder and right shoulder buttons together. This will activate the camera on the rear of the device. Once the camera comes up, press the QR code button that's in the bottom touch screen. It's on the bottom left corner. This is gonna activate the QR scanner mode on your 2DS or 3DS device. Take a picture of this QR code also linked directly from the GitHub at the description below. This is gonna take you to a specific web address that's gonna help you start running the exploits. If the QR code doesn't scan for you, you can type in this web address manually in order to proceed forward, and I'll have that link for you. Press OK to continue. It's going to ask you if you want to launch the web browser. Click OK to continue. If you've never used a web browser, you'll have to go through a quick setup. But once you're done, you should see Proceed to Hacks in the bottom touch screen. Touch it to continue. You'll see some magic color flashing. And in no time at all, you should see the Homebrew Launcher come up on your device. You'll have one application available to you, which is Slot Tool. Tap on it to launch it. Once it launches, you'll see several menu choices in the top display. Change the yellow highlight until you get to Install Exploit to Wi-Fi Slots 1, 2, 3, and Shutdown, and select it with the A button. When it shuts down, remove the SD card from your device and put it back in your computer. We'll try to keep things as tidy as possible moving forward. Go ahead and clear everything out of your downloads folder as you won't need these anymore. Select everything that's in your downloads folder and delete it. From your web browser, it seems kind of scary to download something called unsafe mode, but what it actually does is takes advantage of the safe mode on your device to further the exploit process. Scroll down until you get to the release in zip format, linked in the description below, and download it to your computer. Luma 3DS is what makes it possible for you to install and run the custom firmware on your device. This is linked in the description below. Scroll down to the Assets section on this GitHub page and download the zip file in the Assets section listed right here. In your Downloads folder, both of the files you downloaded are compressed and need to be extracted. Extract them both and as you proceed forward, delete the compressed zip files to eliminate confusion when it comes to copying files over. Once both of these are extracted, you'll be able to start copying files over to your SD card. Go into the Luma 3DS folder you just extracted. There's a file in here called boot.firm. Copy that file, then go over to your SD card, conveniently named subscribe, and paste it right on the root of the SD card. If you have any other boot.firm file here, delete it first and replace it with this file. Go back to your downloads folder and go into the unsafe mode folder that you've recently uncompressed. There's a folder inside a folder here. Go into this folder as well. And inside this folder, you're gonna see a file called usm.bin. Copy this file, go over to your SD card name subscribe, and paste that file right on the root of the SD card. Now you can remove your SD card from your computer and put it back in your device, but don't power your device back on just yet. On a side note, you don't have to name your SD card subscribe. But if you subscribe to this channel while you're here, you'll get notified about great original content, including new 3DS and 2DS related videos as they're posted to the channel. Here's why I didn't want you to power the device on yet. You have to push a button combo in order to launch unsafe mode. And it's left shoulder plus right shoulder plus up on the D-pad plus A, then the power button. Booting up your console this way allows you to boot unsafe mode. What you're going to see is that it says that there's an update to be done and it's going to ask you if you want to proceed with the update process. There's actually no update to be done here. This is part of the exploit. Select OK on the touchpad to continue. You'll get a notice. Click on I accept to continue on the touchpad on the bottom. Again, it's not going to do any updates here. It's just part of the exploit. Then tap on OK to continue. You'll get an error code message 
This is an expected part of the exploit process, don't sweat it. Just tap on OK at the error message to continue. You'll be asked if you want to configure your internet settings, tap on yes. Go to connection number one and tap it. Tap on change settings. Tap the right arrow to go to the next page. Tap on proxy settings. And then tap on detailed setup. After a fancy light show, you should get a message in the top display that says B9S install success. Press any key to reboot your device, but this time instead of launching to the main menu as you would normally expect, you're going to see something a little bit different. This time you'll get the Luma 3DS setup menu. Most of what we're going to focus on here is on the top screen, so I'm going to zoom in for easier viewing. There's only one setting that you need to change here. See where the selection's highlighted in red? Use the D-pad to scroll down until you get to Show NAND or User String in System Settings and select it with the A button. Then press the Start button on your device to reboot. When it comes up, you'll see the usual home screen menu you'd expect. Scroll over until you get to Download Play and tap to select it. When it launches, you'll see the normal two options in the touchscreen below, but in this case, don't pick either one of them. Press the following buttons instead. Left shoulder, down on the D-pad, and select All Together. This will launch the Rosalina menu. It all takes place on the bottom screen. Let's zoom in and take a closer look. There's a small blue indicator to the left of the menus. Use the D-pad to scroll down until you get to the choice that's labeled Miscellaneous Options. Then press the A button to continue. It's already set to the correct one, which is switch the hb.title to the current app. Select it with the A button to continue. You'll see this Operation Succeeded message. Press the B button to go back. Press Home to go back to the main menu and be sure to tap Close on the bottom left corner. Now tap and go right back into Download Play. Except this time, instead of getting Download Play, you'll get the Homebrew Launcher. You'll need to fix your Wi-Fi settings from here. Tap on Slot Tool. Once it goes back into Slot Tool, Scroll down with the yellow highlight until you get to Restore Original Wi-Fi Slots 1, 2, and 3, and select it with the A button. This will mark the changes and then reboot your device. Now power off your device and remove the SD card and put it back into your PC. Let's tidy up your downloads folder before we start downloading a bunch more stuff you're going to need. Go into Downloads and delete anything that's in your downloads folder at this point as you are not going to need it any longer. On the GitHub and linked in the description below, you're going to need this updated version of the Homebrew Launcher wrapper. It's a CF file which is going to be a program file that runs natively right on your 3DS. Scroll down to the Assets section and download homebrewlauncher.cia from the link here. The Luma 3DS updater makes it possible to update Luma 3DS directly on your device without having to go through the connectivity to the PC or shuffling SD cards around. It's linked in the description on the GitHub. Go down to Assets and grab LumaUpdater.cia. CTR No Time Offset is an application that's meant to make sure that the system clock and date is correct amongst all of the applications in the custom firmware. On the GitHub and linked in the description below, scroll down until you get to Assets and download the CTR No Time Offset file with the 3DSX extension. FBI is an application that lets you install those CIA files once you get them moved over to the SD card. Clever, huh? FBI, CIA. Scroll down on the GitHub, linked in the description below, and grab FBI.3DSX and also grab fbi.cia as you'll need both of these files to make it work. DSP1 is an application that makes it possible 
for your 2DS or 3DS to use sound with homebrew applications. It's linked below in the description, it's on the GitHub, scroll down to Assets, grab DSP1.CIA. God Mode 9 is an essential part of any custom firmware setup on a 2DS or 3DS system. It lets you do important system tasks and even empowers you to be able to back up cartridge games onto SD. On the GitHub and is linked in the description below, scroll down until you get to the Assets tab and download the GodMode9.zip folder. Checkpoint helps you manage your save files from your cartridges and your system and helps interchange them between the two. It's linked below in the description, it's on the GitHub, scroll down to the Assets tab and grab checkpoint.cia. Anemone are perennial plants that bloom into bright colors, but Anemone 3DS is meant to help you put your favorite colors in the form of a theme on your 3DS or 2DS console. I know you're gonna find this shocking when I repeat this for like the 92nd time in the video, but it's on the GitHub, it's linked in the description below. Scroll down to Assets, and then grab the Anemone 3DS .cia file. In your downloads folder, only one of the files you downloaded is a zip, and that's the God Mode 9. Go ahead and then extract it. Once you're done extracting it, as always, delete the zip file to prevent confusion moving forward. There's a lot of stuff to shuffle around here, so hang in, we're going to get it done. Go to your SD card, conveniently named subscribe, and you'll need to create two folders here if they're not here already. The first one is called 3DS and it's already here. The second one is not. Go to new and folder and create a new folder and call it CIAS, C-I-A-S. So you'll need a folder called 3DS and a folder called CIAS, both on the root of the SD card. Go back to the download section. They're listed in alpha order here, but we're gonna copy them over in the order listed in the guide. Copy CTR no time offset. Go to your memory card. Go to the 3DS folder and paste it right here. Go back to the downloads folder. The next file is fbi.3dsx. Copy it. Go to the memory card. 3DS folder and paste it right here. Back to the downloads folder we go. This time go down to Homebrew Launcher and copy that SIA file. Go to your memory card, but this time go to the SIA's folder and paste it in the SIA's folder. Back to the downloads folder we go. This time copy LumaUpdate.SIA Go to your memory card, the SIA's folder, and paste it right here. Again, go back to downloads. This time, copy FBI.SIA. Go to your memory card, the SIA's folder, and paste it right here. Go back to the downloads folder, copy DSP1.SIA. Go to your memory card, see us and paste it right here yeah you know the drill by now go back to downloads grab anemone.cia and copy it back to your memory card see us and paste anemone here back to the downloads folder grab checkpoint cia and copy it memory card CS folder, paste it here. Okay, resist the urge to go back to the downloads folder just yet. Go back to the root of your memory card. Go to the Luma folder and create a new folder in here called Payloads, P-A-Y-L-O-A-D-S. Now go back to your downloads folder. Go into the God Mode 9 folder you uncompressed now copy the godmode9.firm file. Go to your memory card, go to the Luma folder, and go to the payloads folder you just made and paste that file right there. 
go back to the downloads folder again, go to the God Mode 9 folder, and copy this entire GM9 folder you see here. Go back to the memory card and paste it right on the root of the memory card. Woo, that was a lot, huh? All right, you're done shuffling stuff around at this point. You can eject the memory card, put it back into your 2DS or 3DS, and power on the device. If you haven't done it up to this point, you absolutely must update your system. It's perfectly safe to do using Boot 9 Strap and Luma 3DS. Tap on the System Settings icon. When the touch screen appears, tap on Other Settings. Then tap that arrow on the right as many times as it takes to scroll all the way to the end of the menu settings. And in the middle you'll see System Update. Tap that. Tap on OK to continue. Then tap on I accept. It'll do some quick checking. It'll ask you if you want to continue, tell it yes. And if you're on 11.13, you should get a message that says it's already updated. If not, make sure you do the updates. Now scroll over and select download play. Just like last time, don't touch any of the buttons on the touch screen. Hold left shoulder, plus down on the D-pad, and the select button to launch Rosalina in the bottom screen. Zoom in again for easier viewing. Scroll down with the small blue marker on the left side until you get to the section labeled Miscellaneous. Press the A button on Miscellaneous. And once again, select Switch the HB.Title to the current app. Press the A button to select it. Once you've picked this option, press the B button to go back, then the Home button to go back to the main menu. Be sure to tap Close to close out Download Play. Then when you tap back into Download Play, you'll be in the Homebrew Launcher and you'll see all of the SIAs that you copied over to the SIAs folder on your memory card. The first one you want to launch is CTR No Time Offset. Tap it in the bottom touch screen below. In the top window on your 2DS or 3DS, you'll see this screen. All you have to do is tap A to set the offset to zero. Once that's completed, just press the start button on your console to go back to the homebrew launcher. Back at the homebrew launcher, tap on FBI to launch it for the first time. This is gonna help you install the remainder of the SIA files directly to your console so you don't have to go through this process over and over again. The way to do this is to use the A button to press for SD, scroll down with the D-pad to SIAs, select Current Directory with the A button, and then scroll down to select Install and Delete All SIAs. Then select it with the A button. You'll get a confirmation message. Select Yes to Install and Delete All SIAs. This moves them essentially from the SD card onto your console so that you don't have to constantly keep going through this process of having to launch them through the homebrew launcher. Once the installation is complete, tap on OK to continue. You won't see anything on the display at this point because you have literally deleted all of the SIA files and installed them directly to your device. At this point, you can just press home and go out of download play entirely back to the main menu where you'll be greeted with some presents. Go ahead and open them up. You know you love presents. Open up the DSP1 present so that you can launch it directly from the main menu. Tap on DSP1 to launch it. And now audio is permanently initialized on your 3DS or 2DS system for homebrew applications. You no longer need this DSP1.SIA, so press the B button to delete it and go back to the home menu. Back at the home menu, Power off your device. You're going to need to power it back on, but this time launch God Mode 9. To launch God Mode 9, hold down the Start button and then press the Power button. In the bottom display, the touchscreen display, scroll down using the D-pad until you get to the term Scripts and press the A button. Select GM9 Megascript. 
Then scroll down with the D-pad to Scripts from Playlex Guide. And press the A button. From here, select Set up Luma 3DS to CTR NAND. And it's telling you it will copy Luma 3DS over to your system. Press A for Yes to continue. From here, it's going to make sure you really want to do this. Of course you do. Press A for Yes again. Then you're going to get a message that you need to put in a very specific pattern in order to make this work. And it's exactly what you see on screen here. Right, down, left, and up on the D-pad, and the A button to continue. And the copy over process is pretty quick. At this point, you can press the A button to continue, and it'll go back to the previous menu. From here, you want to clean up your SD card before you do a backup. Scroll down with the D-pad until you get to Clean Up SD Card. Then select it with the A button. It'll ask you to confirm, press A for yes, and your SD card is now squeaky clean. Press the A button to continue. Press B to go back one level in the menus. You'll be on Backup Options. Press A to continue. Select SysNAN Backup from the list of choices and press A. This is going to do a backup of your internal memory on your 2DS or 3DS. Select A to continue to start the backup process to your SD card. This takes around 8 or 9 minutes or so, so you've got time to go check the score on your favorite sports team. Once it's done with the process, press A to continue. From here, press B to go back one level in the menu system. Scroll all the way down until you get to exit and press the A button. You'll be prompted whether or not you want to relock your system and you absolutely do to protect your internal system memory. Press the A button to lock your write permissions and continue. Once this is done, shift your focus from the bottom touch display to the larger display at the top. Use the D-pad and scroll down until you get to the following choice which is going to be M Memory Virtual near the bottom. Once you get there, select it with the A button. Use the D-pad to scroll down to boot9.bin and press the A button. Shift your attention to the touch screen below and the menu system there. Use the arrow to scroll all the way down to copy to 0 colon slash gm9 slash out and press the A button. You'll get a confirmation message. Press the A button to continue. Once it's done, press the Home button and use the menu to scroll to Power Off System and press the A button. Once it powers off, remove the SD card and put it back into your PC one last time. Your 2DS or 3DS is backed up to the memory card, but you need to take it off the memory card and back it up on your local computer. Go to the SD card, conveniently named Subscribe, grab the entire GM9 folder and copy it. This will make sure everything you need is copied over correctly. Then just go wherever you save stuff on your computer, in this case I'm just going to save it right on the desktop, and paste it here. There are two files that you need to grab and delete off of the SD card moving forward. Go into the GM9 folder. Then go into the Out folder, and the two file names are going to be different depending upon when you go through this tutorial. But the file names are going to say date underscore, serial number underscore, sysnand underscore, some kind of number dot bin, and the other one will say the same thing dot sha. You need to delete both of these files out of this folder and you're not going to need any of the stuff that's in the downloads folder anymore. Just go ahead and swipe over all of it and delete it. And if you feel like you need to save any of that stuff for the short term, don't forget it's always still sitting in your recycle bin until you empty it. Now you can take the SD card out and put it back in your 2DS or 3DS and power it on. Now that your 2DS or 3DS is running custom firmware, now what? Why not load some classic games on it and start playing them right now? 
In the next video, I'll show you how to install RetroArch and start playing tens of thousands of classic games on your 2DS or 3DS console. Check out that video right here on screen or in the description or pinned comment section.